Microwaves in the vacuum travel at some speed. We, we know these are electromagnetic waves, so this is the speed of light, actually. Also known as constant C, and it has some wavelength Y. What are the speed and possible order of magnitude of X-rays in a vacuum? So you are comparing microwaves and X-rays. So they are both electromagnetic waves at the speed of light, right? So that means they all have the same speed. So there should not be any kind of funny, funny factor. No, 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 no. They all have the same speed. If microwave has speed X, X-ray also has speed X. Now the wavelength. How many times smaller is this X-ray compared to microwave? Because you see, it's a factor of wavelength. Ooh, so we got to remember our electromagnetic spectrum facts. If you don't have it in your textbook or notes, you can just literally just type electromagnetic spectrum and just Google it. It's generally quite accurate. So we are going to the high frequency zone. Where is microwave? Ah, microwave here is 10 to negative 2. Gamma, oh sorry, X-ray is about 10 to negative 10. These are the numbers you want to remember for wavelength. And for frequency, you can remember a different set of numbers as well. I encourage you to memorize both because they will ask you to estimate. So it looks like 10 to the 2 to 10 to the 10. Let's write that down. Microwave is 10 to negative 2. X-ray is about 10, negative 10. So how many times are? Just times are times 10 to the negative 8. Yeah, negative 8 minus 2, 10. Yep, that adds up. Okay, so I think here we can choose to A as our best choice for this case. Know your electromagnetic spectrum. It will help you. All right, so that's all for this video. See you in the next one.